So this problem is an adaption of a classic problem in which a man is jogging home with his dog and the dog is running at 10 miles an hour and the man is jogging at 5 miles per hour. So the dog you know, goes ahead of the man, runs all the way home, and once he gets home he instantly turns around so we, just so we can assume that the dog is always running at 10 miles per hour. So there's no deceleration or acceleration there. He just gets home and then is instantly going, turns around and goes back to the man at 10 miles an hour. Of course, once he gets back to the man, you know, the man's gone a little bit farther, and he, he then turns around and goes back home and just repeats that process until, um, until they both get home. So then the question is, how far does the dog travel in all that time? So there's an easy solution and a hard solution. Uh, the hard solution involves uh, using an infinite series, and that essentially finds the distance that the, dra that the dog travels on each leg, and then sums all of those up. So we'll start out doing that, and then um, after we do that, we'll do the easy ver or the easy solution, which just involves essentially using the formula uh, distance equals rate times time, and use that to check our answer. So what we have to realize is, okay, if the man is right here, and um, his house is right here, then and of course, this whole distance is one mile. Uh, then, okay, the dog runs to the house, turns around, comes back. And at that point, the man's gone you know, a certain distance. So he's then somewhere here. So what we need to figure out is this total distance that the dog has traveled. And that'll give us the first term of the series, you know, the, how far the dog's traveled on the first leg. Well, what's interesting to know is this problem actually isn't dependent on the speeds of either the man or the dog, but instead the ratio of the speeds. So the man is traveling at uh, 5 miles per hour and the, uh, the dog is going at 10 miles per hour. So the dog is, gonna, is traveling twice as fast, so given any time interval, uh, the dog is going to travel twice as far. And also notice that the distance that the man travels plus the distance that the dog travels has to equal to 2, which is just twice um, this distance. That's because, well, okay, the dog has to go all the way home, so that's a full mile. And it's got to turn around, and it meets the man at some point. So the dog's traveled part of, um, part of the mile, and the man's traveled the other part. So since the dog travels, since they travel two miles uh, total, and the dog travels twice as far as the man, well, this is going to have to be two times um, two-thirds for the distance traveled by the dog on the first leg. Um, the distance covered by the dog on the first leg. So now they're at which point they're here and process repeats all over again except that now the whole distance isn't a mile, it's shorter. So we also need to figure out what that distance is. So it might help to do this problem in a little bit more generality. So instead of saying one mile, um, let's call this, uh, this distance dk where dk is the distance between the man and the, ho man and the house at the beginning of uh, the kth leg. So I mean, clearly um, d sub 0 is equal to 1. Uh, d sub 1 is equal to, uh, well, we know that if the dog travels um, 2 times 2 thirds, so this is 4 thirds um, of a mile, and they both travel two miles, or their combined distance is two miles, well, so the man has to be traveling um, two minus four-thirds, which is two-thirds. Um, is that correct? Let's see. So the dog travels um, a full mile and then 
back, so he travels four thirds. Right, so the man does travel, okay, so the man travels two thirds, but we're interested, um, so after the first mile, not in the distance that the man has traveled, but the distance remaining from the man to the house. So if the dog travels four thirds, now not of one mile, but of two miles. So on the cave leg, the dog travels um, two times uh, dk, which is the distance remaining on the first leg. Right? So we have um, now instead of the distance traveled by the man and the dog having to sum to two, it should sum to two times the distance from the man to the house at the beginning of the leg. So it should be two times dk, and the dog travels two thirds of that distance. And so this is four thirds dk. And now it's a you know, similar thing. We have two minus, or two dk, which is the total distance traveled. Um, subtract it off, by, or subtract off the distance traveled. Um, subtract off the distance traveled by the um, dog, which is four thirds dk. So this is two thirds dk. So this is distance traveled by, since um, oh, man traveled on the cave leg. Which means that the distance out at the end of the cave leg, so at the beginning of the k plus one leg, uh, is gonna be equal to, um, well, dk minus the distance covered by the man on the cave leg, which is two thirds dk. So that leaves, um, this is two thirds dk, that leaves one third um, dk. So here d1 is gonna be one third. Uh, d2 is gonna be one third of the previous term, so one third squared. And now the pattern becomes a lot more apparent. So this is one third cubed, and all the way down to dk is going to be one third to the kth power. So, it seems like we've done a, done a lot of work here, and you may be wondering exactly where we are in the problem because still haven't really figured out um, figured out a formula for the infinite sum of all the legs that the that the dog covers. But let's see if we can figure that out now. Since we have a little bit more information, we know, uh, let's, before we do this, let's think about the first couple legs. So remember that the dog you know, starts out, the man goes out to the house and comes back. Well, the total distance that he travels is um, two times two thirds um, dk. Well, we know what dk is, and this is the formula we had before, I just erased, so this is the distance traveled by the dog on the kth leg. Now we know what dk is. So we can write this as two times two thirds um, dk, so this is one third. This is equal to, or one third to the kth power, excuse me. So this is equal to four times one over, or one third to the k plus one. So this is the distance traveled by the dog on the kth leg. We're interested in the sum of uh, the distance covered on all the legs. So this is gonna be the sum from k equals zero to infinity um, of four times one third to k plus one. Now so it's all right for us to go from k equals zero to infinity. Um, if we plug in zero, then we just get um, one. So we see that our first term is equal to four times one third of the first power. That's just four thirds, which is, agrees with our original calculation that if the, doc, if the total distance combined by, or total distance traveled by both is two miles, and the man is traveling half as fast as the dog, then the dog has to travel two times, uh, two times one times two thirds. So this is four thirds. And 
and we add uh, plus 4 over 1 third to uh, k equals 1, so this is 1 third squared, so 4 ninths. And now you can see quickly that this is a geometric, or almost a geometric series, it's just missing the um, Four is just missing four times one. So if we factor out all the fours and add in that term that we want to have to make it a geometric series, so one, we'd also have to add minus one. So let's add minus one plus one plus four thirds plus four ninths plus um, dot dot dot. Well, this is equal to, um, write this up here. This is equal to um, four times minus one plus, um, this should all be ones and not fours since I factored out the four, uh, plus sum from k equals uh, zero to infinity of uh, one third to the k power. Now since one third is um, less than one. We can use the sum for the geometric series. We get four times minus one plus one over one minus a third. So one minus one third is two thirds. And this is equal to oh, minus four plus four times three halves. This is equal to minus four uh, times this is 4 times 3 is 12, divided by 2 is 6, plus 6 is equal to uh, 2. So after all that work, we get that the dog travels exactly 2 miles. So that was the hard way. Um, obviously, it took a lot of work figuring out a formula for, um, for the distance covered by the dog on each leg, and then we had to sum the infinite series, and kind of adjust it so we could use the, um, so adjust it so we could turn it into a geometric series, and that was kind of a little messy, a little painful. Well, it turns out that there's a lot easier way. Um, so how far does the dog travel? Put the answer down here, two miles. So now we want to use the fact that the man was one mile from home. He starts running it or jogging it five miles per hour, and he doesn't really he doesn't change his speed. He doesn't change his direction. He just runs straight home at five miles per hour. So he covers using the formula distance equals rate times time. He covers one mile. His speed is five miles per hour. So we can use this to solve for his time. So the time it takes for the man to get home is, well, one over, or one-fifth of an hour. So in minutes, this is equal to, um, let's see, so 60 minutes over five, so this is 12 minutes. All right, well, uh, the dog is, so it takes the dog the exact the same amount of time to get home as, uh, as the man. I mean, he's just running back and forth, and he's also running at a constant, uh, constant pace, constant rate. So what's the rate of the dog? It's equal to 10 miles per hour. We can find out the distance uh, that the dog covers by, looking, by saying 10, or so the distance covered by the dog now is equal to the rate of the dog, so 10. Um, 10 miles per hour. Uh, so actually it's more convenient to keep the hours rather than converting this to minutes. It is 10 miles an hour times the time, one-fifth of an hour, and we get two miles. So if you were given this as kind of a puzzle and you saw this trick that the, takes the man and the dog the same amount of time to get home, you can easily figure out the time that it takes the man to get home since it's, he's running you know, one mile, five miles per hour. It's, it's going to be one-fifth of an hour. 
and the dog's running at a constant pace, so you can just figure out how fast or how long the dog uh, or how far the dog uh, will travel in that amount of time since he's always going at 10 miles per hour. However, if you don't see that trick, then you're stuck with that pretty awful infinite series that we, that we just saw. But either way, the dog uh, runs two miles total. <laughs>